inverse cosine function. Here we can see the graph of the inverse cosine function. We're not going to have to graph it. Uh, what we are going to have to look at is the domain. The domain of inverse cosine is the same as the domain of the uh, inverse sine, negative 1 to 1. The range is not, though. The range is a little bit different. The range of an inverse cosine is from 0 to 5. Okay, you are going to need to know those, or at least be able to look them up. And that's very important. Now, what you might notice is from zero to pi. If we were in degrees, if we were in degrees, that would be like from zero to 180. Okay, most of the time we'll be in radians, but sometimes we might be in degrees. And that's saying from zero to 180, which would indicate we're in either quadrant one or quadrant two. And so there is no three or four. It's only quadrants one and two. And so what you would be thinking is positive numbers would be defined in quadrant one, and negative numbers would be defined in quadrant two. Remember, cosine is going to be negative on the left. So second quadrant, negative values. That's what you would have to remember. Okay, so it's going to be really important that you that you can think about the domain and the range of all of these inverse trig functions. X intercept is at one, y intercept is at pi over two, and there is no symmetry. So let's do some examples. Example two, we're finding inverse cosine values. Find y. We've got inverse cosine or arc cosine of one. Arc cosine of one. So you look at your chart and you're looking at, at cosine, you're looking at one, you're going backwards to find the angle. And that's what that's what we're finding. When we find an inverse trig function, we're finding an angle. Inverse cosine of one is zero. And so we always do what and where, but the where general, generally indicates if it's positive or negative. And since there's no such thing as a negative zero, that's just it. Inverse cosine of one is zero. Don't have to worry about the where. Um, before moving on to part B, I'd rather do a couple of more examples of positive values. If I did something like inverse cosine of one half. Okay. Inverse cosine of one half. You find the cosine, you find one half. And that angle would be pi over 2. That's the what. When we talk about where, and that comes from the fact that this is positive. Okay? If I know that's a positive value, that would indicate where I am, namely quadrant 1. Because we're looking at a domain for inverse cosine is from negative 1 to 1. That's what I can plug in. Okay? That's what I'm allowed to plug in. The range for inverse cosine is from 0 to pi. And so if you look at that on a graph, here's 0 and here's pi. I'm talking about quadrants 1 and 2. And so when I do the inverse cosine of 1 half, I see that's a positive value. I get a pi over 3 referencing, but, but in the first quadrant. And so in the first quadrant, it just is what it is. That answer would be pi over 3. Okay. Um, if I did inverse cosine of the square root of 3 over 2, Again, you use the chart backwards to find the angle. That's what we'll find. When we do an inverse cosine, we're doing it, we're finding an angle. And so with R6, but the fact that this is positive, the positive input value is, is leading me towards the first quadrant where those positive numbers are. And so that R6 just did what it is. Okay? If it was in the second quadrant, it would be zero. And that's what's going to happen on part B. Inverse cosine of negative square root of 2 over 2. You can get the what from the chart really easy. We know that has to do with the pi over 4, right? Straight from the chart. However, this negative indicates that we are in quadrant 2. We know that cosine is negative on the left side. Okay, normally we've had uh, cosine is positive over here and negative over here. But because my range is from 0 to pi, that means that there is no third and fourth quadrant. We're, we're not even looking downstairs at all. Okay, so we're just looking at quadrant one or two, and that negative is, is pointing me towards the second quadrant. Okay, so what I've got is a pi over four in that second quadrant. So we do what we always do, and that's pi. We call it four pi over four. If you get a common denominator, it's just a lot easier to look at. I'm looking at pi over 4 before I get to that 4 pi over 4. And so this angle, this answer, is going to be 3 pi over 4. That's a lot trickier to me than, than the sine graphs, or the, the inverse sine graphs. Okay? You, you can't just stick a negative in front of it. 
That works when you do inverse sine, but sticking a negative in front of this one is going to get you. All right, so be very careful on inverse cosine. 